Um, okay, hello again, everybody. For those that uh, don't know me or haven't come across me before, my name's Nigel Payne. I live in Slovakia. I am mainly a Northeastern railway modeler, but I have done lots of other things in my time. Um, I've built a lot of models for people over the years and about three years ago, I suddenly realized I got nothing of my own. So I decided I was going to start building for myself. Um, I just put together a program of what I wanted. Um, and part of it was building a rake of Northeastern Railway clear story coaches. Um, and this morning we covered the sort of the details of the Poppy's wood tech kit and uh, what uh, what I did to construct it. And now we'll go into detailing the model. I, I guess detailing models, it can apply to any model that you're building. Um, so uh, I like to have a nice detailed model. I like to pick out details and characteristics of a, of a prototype that uh, make it special or, you know, just do it right. Um, so I have, I have a coach body um, ready to detail. Detailing a model, if you're scratch building or if you're with the case of the poppies kit, it's it's more of an aid to kit to, to modeling because there's no chassis to speak of. And um, the, I don't think there's bogies and, and there's things like that. So you, you obviously have to add in bits yourself and you, you need to use facilities like the Guild um, uh, website where you can get lists of manufacturers and you can search for bits and pieces that you want. Um, and over the years, I've built up a, a spreadsheet with a list of all of the bits, Northeastern bits and bits that I buy um, so I know where to go. So just before we started, we were talking about GHW Model Bow, and they make, it's a continent, uh, it's a German company, um, and they make or supply um, brass sections, screws, and bits and pieces like that. Now, that's ideal for me because I'm in the EU. You, you, you guys are back in the UK, so you've got uh, a whole source of uh, of of bits and pieces that you can get from big companies like, uh, I don't know, Eileen, I think is probably one name that everybody knows, but there's lots of others. Um, this is a Northeastern Railway six wheeler that I built um, and uh, based on the Poppy's design. Uh, actually, we'll talk about painting in, in later on. Um, and it's got details. It's got lots of bits and pieces on the roof. Um, so, my point about this is when you're detailing a model is to try and make it strong so these bits don't fall off. Traditionally on Raven's back, talk about the layout that I used to work on years ago. After a show, we used to go around and we used to sweep the layout, the main running lines, and pick up bits that had fallen off. So I'm trying to make all of the models that I construct really strong so they don't fall apart so things like pull rods are soldered in place they're not used a bit of glue they're all soldered in place the the tank here is soldered in place it's it's held together properly the the steps here um are um, are actually the bottom step here is made of brass it's not made of uh, of wood because I decided that it needed to be strong because it, it'll it get caught. You'll catch it on your sleeve and you'll break it. So detailing a model, like something like this, when you come to detailing it, you, you know, in my in my book, you need to make sure that you can uh, put plenty of, plenty of detail, but plenty of strength in it as well. So I've got lots of bits. These are all for six wheel coaches. Dougie, who's gone to sleep now, uh, cast all these for me. He was formerly Roundfield Engineering. So I've got a lot of 
angled side vents which will go on the on the on the roof of the coach running along here and these will be drilled and inserted in there and glued in place um, i've chosen white metal rather than um 3d printed as they are here because of um strength because of strength um Moving on to the uh, the running boards, what I'm going to have to do for the for the droppers. So there's a series of of droppers. You can probably see it better. The series of droppers to hold the running board in place. Um, I'm going to resort to a bit of 3D Fusion 360 design, and I will design and draw up some of these droppers to suit. I think. Slaters, I think they make them. They, they, and there might be other companies, but I th certainly spotted Slaters do them for their Midland coaches. But I'm not certain whether they drop the same de depth that I need for this for these coaches. Um, but just as an example, for for th if you decide to 3D print something, uh, draw it up in Fusion 360. This is what I've done for a a bush reverser you can just see that there reflecting off my forehead i drew this all up in infusion 360 and had it cast by a guy who i call michael hopkins and my intention is for the details on this coach because i'm building five of them is to actually um uh draw up the the hangers for the for the footstep uh in Fusion 360, send him a, uh, he doesn't know this yet, uh, send him a file and ask him if he can cast them for me. Um, I, I think making it out of brass rather than, and cast rather than bending up a bit of uh, sprue, it'll just make it stronger. And uh, just... no, Nigel, a couple yes, of sir. things. At the moment, we can see just from your mouth upwards and a bit of ceiling, Ah, that's that's much better. Thank you very much. That's I've got the, thing. the next question is how expensive is it to have that cast up then? That casting there, which is quite it's quite heavy, uh cost can't remember. I bought three of them and I think it cost me something like twenty five pounds. Presumably, if, if you were getting a lot of them cast off, it would work out less expensive. It would it, work out less expensive. Um, th this is quite a, this is quite a complicated design, and um, uh, and I had three made, and and I uh, you know, and, and what I'm hoping is that we can. Yeah, you know, I think I need six for each side. I think I need twelve per coach, so. I think there'll be some economies of scale there, but uh, we'll wait and see. But that, that's my intention for this coach is to, is to get those those hangers, make it out of, get them out of uh, a, a nice um, lost wax casting. And um, I think you can get them from other sources as well. I think you could probably, it, it depends on what you're building. I mean, I'm building a poppy's coach, so that's what I, uh, that's what I do. Do you draw the sprues? Uh, you mean draw the, the, the droppers? Is that right? No, I think he's talking uh, about the sprues, the bit that actually link where you were holding it with. Do, oh, do, that. Do you include the sprues or does your supplier add the sprues? He adds them. So oh, I right. send him I send him the drawing and he and he will add them because he knows how the I guess how the metal will flow. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea. Okay. I've no idea. I'm not an expert on on casting. I'd love to be, but um, it's take. I, I returned to um, to CAD for the foot at the end of last year, and I haven't used it since forever. And uh, okay. and it's been enough le relearning that. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, well, I've got my list here. So I have spoken about the vent. Uh, yeah, spoken about the ventilators on the roof. Um, on the above the 
Ooh, here we are above the doors. There are ventilators to go in there as well. Um, again, these these are probably offered by Anthony as a three D. Uh, as, uh, sorry, not three D. A um, yeah, three D. Uh, uh, a resin print. Um, but I've also got these in in white metal as well. Um, so it's it's just a, another another bit of detail which will be strong. Um, I'll tick these off and then I know what, that, that I'm keeping up with what I set out and I do. I've spoken about the steps and the brackets. Um, handrails and handles. So obviously there's door handles here. At the end of the coach, there'll, there'll be steps and and a and a handrail going up going up to the top of there. Uh, those will all be made out of brass. Um, and uh, the handles, the door handles on the on the coach there and all the way along, and the and the pull handle, not pull handle, the grab rails. Grab rail, that's the word. Um again, I I, I think I bought some from uh, from a manufacturer. Um I, I probably the hand the, the, the actual door handles were probably um from Slater's, but they're available from other sources. <laughs> um, one thing about the, the door handles is I'm going to have to drill into the wood and through to the other side. And you have to be careful with wood when you're drilling. So don't force it. Take it easy. Probably I'll probably use a hand drill rather than a um, use the electric. Um, I also have another problem because on the inside of the wall of the coach it's a better way of looking at it on the inside of the wall of the coach um we have to talk about how you're going to glaze it um i don't know what what do you guys use for glazing have you have you a, a plastic sheet person or a or glass well i use plastic sheets well actually acrylic I use acrylic yeah i um I used acrylic for years, and I and I hated it because, um, because I hate gluing glass. I hate gluing glass on on the locos, and I've got three locos there that need need some sort of glass glass window panes gluing. Um, but with this model, because it's um, very light, I said it's about two hundred and fifty grams. One of the things I've been working on is sort of ways of of increasing the weight. And I'll just share this with you and see what you, you guys think. But I found a company called Levenhoog. I don't think that's how you pronounce it. And these are um, glass slides for um, microscopes. And if you pinch them in your vice or hold them carefully in your vice, you can, you can snip them off to whatever length you want. And with my compartments, Oh, I'm going to empty this out now. Here's a bit of dirty glass I prepared earlier. The dirt is there so that you can see it. Honest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we believe you. Yeah. Um, and um, this is a first class glass because it goes in the first class compartment. And what I've decided is I will be mainly making my windows out of glass. Um, because because I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the idea of it was to make them out of glass because it will start to add a little bit of weight to the model. Um, so I'll put that safely there. So one of the cats was in here yesterday and, and found the glass and decided it'd be a good idea to uh, push them around. So, yeah, so I, I bought... 100 of these, so not 100 packs, 100 to class slides. So I've got enough to do to do all the models. Um, and we were talking earlier about uh, glue. So the, 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 the models, the wood, the models are assembled using this super fatic glue. And they also do a rather nice glaze, glazing glue as well, which dries clear. So if I do decide to glue these glass windows in, then uh, I can do, and if it smudges, then 
be less visible. The other thing about glass is if you've got things like a toilet window, which is generally like an etched frosted finish, is I discovered on a model I built years ago with using glass windows is you can lightly spray some varnish across it um, and the little droplets make the obscured glass. And if you wanted to put a pattern in the glass, if you use the end of a scalpel blade, you can make your nice etched glass finish. Um, now, these coaches don't have toilets in, but that some of them are lavatory, uh, do have a lavatory in them. And so I'm going to try and do that again. Um, you can also add things like um, <laughs> no smoking. Do you remember no smoking? Um, <laughs> no smoking signs. You can put no smoking signs and maybe paint them on and, and scrape them so that you get a nice sharp edge. I don't know. We'll see how it progresses. So that's the glazing. You can get transfers for those. Say again? You can get transfers for those. You can. You can indeed. So that would probably be the uh, be, be the solution. Um, Just a couple right. of questions before you go further. Yeah. Um, do you have the address or the email address that you can pop into chat uh, to say where do you get the slides from? Uh, Amazon. Amazon. <laughs> I, I know Amazon. what you mean. <laughs> do they know what I mean? No, yeah. I think it's something to do with the South American River. Is that correct? South American River, yeah. Yes. Not Orinoco. Is Orinoco? <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, where do you get your glue from? Where do I get my what you from? The glue, the super alphatic glue. The same. The same. I actually purchased some more. I purchased yesterday, I ordered two of those mm -hmm. um, and a bottle of. Um, 3D print resin from the same organization. It's simply a distributor. <laughs> distributor, yeah. But but yeah, modeling supplies is is, is I think I, I've found for, certainly where I am is that by by looking on uh, Amazon, <laughs> there are other companies selling things online as well. Um, you you can find pretty much. If you're, if you're thorough, you can find what you're looking for. Google is a wonderful thing um, most of the time. Um, right. So we've done we pretty much, unless anybody's got any questions, we've pretty much dealt with the outside of the coach. Is that, are, are, we, are we sort of fairly agreed on that? Is everybody happy? Yeah, nodding heads. Right. So... Inside the coach, we have a choice. We have the Anthony includes these in his uh, this 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 uh, I was going to call it an etch, but it's not, is it? It's a cut, I guess, which are his seats which fit inside the coach. Um, he has said, and it's and I quite agree with him that it's important if you're building a coach like this, is that it needs something uh, to protect the inside. You know, inside to to strengthen the walls, the outside walls of the coach. Yeah, you need something in there, uh, and at the moment it's empty. So you could put these in, um, but when you put them in, they do look uh, that well. They're not prototype, shall we say? They're not prototypical. And what I've found is that um, they they sit in there, um, and and I look at it, and I'm not I'm not a happy bunny. This is the traditional thing that everybody uses, yeah. Bit of extruded blur, and stick them in. Um, uh, Robin Robin Taylor, who, who does a lot of coach building, he's done a lot of talks online, uh, um, virtual presentations I mean, he's done a lot of those and uh and i know robin very well and he uses these an awful lot he also uses wooden um profile that's been that's been milled up as well which is quite good as well but i sort of thought well i've got this 3d printer so i thought well what can i what can i do 
So if I try and do this, um, desktop, is that right? Share. Oh God, it's got, got to allow Zoom to, sorry about this folks. Try again. Oh. Well, that's me screwed. screwed. I've uh, I've got a, I've got the reset Zoom to uh, to be able to to do an online presentation. All right, um, it wasn't particularly important. You can go to um, the Guild Facebook page, and I'll post some drawings on there, and I'll also put them on, um, uh, and they're also on the Guild forum under the 3d printing thing if you look, if you look at my name what i was going to show you was what i what i've been drawing because instead of having something like this i decided to have something like this and this is drawn directly off a drawing from northeastern record volume 2 and it's you can see see side on uh, it was a side on drawing and I think, I think maybe this way, uh, this way as well. Um, but um, from that, I, I drew up it on a uh, Fusion 360. I drew up a first class Northeastern Railway player story coach seat. Um, I think, I think Anthony at Poppies is going to include, uh, offer them. To, for inclusion in his coach kits as well so uh you, you you can do it but this took ages to do <laughs> absolute ages building the basic shape of a, of a coach seat isn't difficult but making all that tufting i think that's the word is it you know this tufting of seats where they they have the little button and they pull it through and it and it puts the pulls the seat back slightly pulls the cushion back slightly doing that tufting was a real devil but I don't know. Does that look better as a seat than? Yeah, yeah I'd agree. Yeah. So I've I've drawn these up. They've got. If you look at the profile there, you can see that it curves in on the on the on the leg of the of the uh, of the seat, and um, just drops in quite nicely. Um, does it interfere with the windows? Right. That one is a is one of the early ones. This is a third class seat. And if you can see, there's a chunk taken out of it. For your glazing. At the top for the glazing. And uh, it'll help locate the glazing as well, then, won't it? Yep. And It'll help. Huh, what did I put with glazing? Put it away. And this glazing is a bush fit. That's absolutely super, that. Superb. It's good, isn't it? Now, I started doing this and I thought, well, <coughs> this would be good for, uh, for, for other other companies as well um so if anybody is interested in they've got an lnwr coach that they want to have uh that, that, that needs sorry I'm, I'm i'm thinking while i'm talking so it's i can't multitask very well um if there's anybody else who wants a uh what wants a yeah uh, Oh, it's fallen out. But you can see, you can see the one on, you can see the one on the on the left hand side. There's the hand, there's the um, armrest. And I showed you this before we stopped for 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 lunch, didn't we? Uh, it was this one? And here's the here's the door. Now the Northeastern Railway first class. Uh, First class um, doors had had the same sort of um, tufting padded 
um, uh, material. It was actually this was black leather, and the and the leather pull had N E R um, picked out in in gold. So, but all of that was done on the on the Fusion three hundred and sixty, uh, and printed out on my Eligo whatever it is printer. Um, the cost of the printer and everything wasn't massively expensive, but I've used it a lot. And so that's, uh, is that a resin printer then, rather than the? Yeah, you, you. I wouldn't use a. I wouldn't use a, the other printer. Oh, oh, this has got the. It's got the profile as well for the for the uh, humble home on, on thing, but I'll hold it because it's not. It should be glued in, of course. But uh, you can see where I'm going here, can't you? Mm. Absolutely. So if you were to look through your coach window, I've got a first class seat and a third class seat in the in the, in the compartment, but uh, it, you know you can see where we where we're going here. Um, I don't think I'd go as far as putting sort of detail above the window, other than that ventilator that we've got, um, because well, it could do, but you can't really see it, um, but. I've never seen anybody do this before. And and I was thinking, well, you know, it would be quite it would be quite nice as a as a as something for, for people that are detailing up their, their coaches. The um what do you call it? <clears throat> the, the drop the drop for the um for the for the um for the glass window is 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 obviously the correct dimension and on the on the front of the glass i might actually paint it on in the um with a with a lining pen um but the reason why i'm sort of talking about all this really is that the interior of the coach when when the all of these seats all of these seats are, are fitted in is it adds a little bit of weight to the model and it adds a lot of detail but to you can you can paint this you can spray it and with uh, in the northeastern I think it was painted well not painted the materials like a a deep blue color for first class and 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 a brown color for sec for third class um, but you could spray all that you could you could weather it or whatever you want to do on it. And it, it shouldn't take that long. And to assemble this inside a compartment, I mean, one, two. So the de the time in detailing it is really quick. And I've got five coaches to do, so I don't want to be spending huge amounts of time doing all this detail. But I think it will make a really detailed uh, interior for the for the coaches. Um, that's that's my idea anyway. And uh, I dare say if somebody was was had a um, another yeah. I, it's not difficult to make these once once you've once you've drawn it up the first time. I've drawn it up now. So all that I need to do now is to, asking how did you draw the padding? Um, you using uh, a, a feature called. I can't remember what it was called now. Surface, surface, it, creating a form in Fusion 360. There's a, a, a Autodesk Fusion 360. There's a you can create a form, and you create a plane, and from that plane, you need to set up a mesh, and you use what they call T spline vertices, and you literally a video in the Gojo Gill. Sorry. Might be. If there is one, I'll have to do, have to do one if no one's on one. But it's, it takes a long time, and I've done three three lots of prints of these seats before I got them right. But um, but it takes a lot of a lot of time to perfect it. But you know, it it, it just it just comes out comes out well. Um, there was a 
on the internet there was somebody who'd done it, it, it tough if you google three uh, fusion 360 tufting there's a lady that did it and uh, and i followed what she how she'd done it i, I followed her, her, her thank thing thank you would you would you would you suggest keeping on printing them all out or do you print one and then use that as the basis to make a cast um well i've got no means of casting them so i'd have to go and commission somebody to do it i guess so in my book i'm uh, i'm just going to print them off um i think that the, the these resin things they're a lot easier to paint than if you were let's say you've got a a white metal a white metal part there um it would make it it'd be quite heavy if i my son was in here a second ago and he's, he's disappeared off. If I dropped in, in the seats, I haven't got all the seats printed off yet, but having added the seats is that this has probably trebled the weight of the coach body already. So um, a bit like Dougie, uh, Doug Hay this morning saying about putting Edwardian figures inside his coaches. Um, if, uh, if you were to make these out of white metal, I think it might make the coach, dare I say it, heavy. <laughs> Very heavy. Too heavy, very heavy. <laughs> I think it would be very heavy. Do you agree, Richard? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah it'd be too um, much weight. It'd be too much weight, but this is just right. But it's got all the it's all the, all the detail. Um, yeah. Now the big question is on this, which you lot can tell me, is what about the seat racks? Has anybody done seat racks? Slaters did them for theirs, didn't they? Did they? Yeah, I, I remember a few years ago building the, the Slater six wheeler, and uh, that had the brass etchings for the seat racks. I didn't they... put them in because they were too fiddly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that was again that was my thought about this is is I mean, that ain't fiddly. That is not fiddly. And the only reason why I put the armrests separately was because um, I was unsure as to how it would fit in the in regards to the glazing. But now I might even just add these onto the end of the seats, and you'd just literally just well, yeah, you know, <laughs> they drop in. <laughs> And you've got your instant bit of nice in coach interior, rather, rather than rather than that, um, uh, and and it was and it was strong enough. It's going to be strong enough, isn't it? The one. Yeah, I saw the earlier one. Sorry. It's still. Oh. Is somebody. Uh, oh, I thought some, it was a question. <laughs> no, I think somebody's uh, got somebody talking in the background. So um, that was that was my idea for for the coach. The, the coach floor, um, uh, Anthony very kindly put put planking on the on the floor and on the walls. But actually, a, a northeastern railway coach, uh, the third class has a it's a Slovakian word linoleum, <laughs> linoleum. Um, it has lino on, on the on the on the floor on the third class and first class has a um a blue I can't remember what color carpet it was, but it's got the Northeastern Railway roundel with Northeastern Railway written around it. So if I decide to do that, um I'll do that, but you won't be able to see any of the planking on the floor of the coach. And on the walls that it should have split into three it should be picture mirror picture and on the other side it's picture advertisement for a northeastern railway hotel picture <laughs> uh, so all these little these collectors posters and things that people buy you know these various auctions that's what would be going going there so that would take up probably up to above the window level of the coach um, leaving leaving just the uh, the, the rack uh, on on top and whether I put that in I, I don't know I haven't decided yet 
Well, and as Ian McCormick says, you can only see them if the coach is up on an embankment. You're looking well, up. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And you can only see, people might also say, well, you can only see the detail that Nigel's talking about if if you had the coaches lit um, or, or if everything was stationary. So um, my, this is a diagram seven. So this has a, it has a luggage compartment here. So I could potentially put some, you know, put some sort of, um, uh, say again? They light it up. I'd lit, I've lit a couple of mine up, but they look lovely. Yep. So. And they were just eating Kirk kits with it. <laughs> there you go. Nice of that. I'll try and do an article for for the uh, for the Gazette about these. I think it might be interesting for people. Ian, <laughs> Ian McCormack's also mentioned that uh, London Brighton and South Wales railway carriages they also had a pull handle for an emergency brake. Did the Northeastern railways have that? Uh, and would you be able to see it anyway? Because it's usually up in the roof. It's up in the up in the clear story. Up in the clear story, um, and unfortunately, because I have to reset my Zoom thing, I can't show all this. But um, in the the clear story bit there, they're not um, clear windows; they're opaque. They're they're frosted with a pattern on them. So, if you were looking in through through those windows, there you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. Um, as to the, the the frosting detail. Um, what I discovered was, and it's not my idea, no, nothing ever is original, is it? Um, but if you draw a, a sketch of an etched glass pattern, like go and look at the real thing at, at uh, Beamish or at, at um, Stainmore, find out what the, what the pattern is, uh, draw it up and reduce it down. Now, I've got a nice photocopier behind me. You can see it there, <laughs> and I, I can scale it. I can scale it down um, to to seven mil, one forty third, and then if you photocopy onto translucent paper, which you can get, uh, you could then make the etched glass um, windows. So that that's. And another experiment that I want to try out. Sorry, there's a cat egg glued onto this model. <laughs> <laughs> I have that problem. Yeah, there yeah, we have that problem, big time. In fact, I'm surprised I haven't had any visitors this afternoon. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, not not convinced yet, but I'm thinking of putting a uh, etch glass inside there. Well, etch be a, a recreation of the etch glass in there. Um, I don't, I don't fancy taking a, a glass a glass slide and, and cutting it into tiny little chunks to fit in there. Mind you, I don't know. What do you think? You could do, couldn't you? Mm. Um, the, uh, the inside walls of the coach were painted white, as was the clear street. There's all sorts. If you look at photographs of Northeastern Railway coaches, the first class compartments were a bit posh. All lined out inside and everything, but I'm sorry, I don't, I don't think I'll be able to go that far in the detail. But um, it's, like I said, it's about putting detail in and putting it in quickly. And that's what I thought that uh, would be a good idea to do. How, how to do it? Um, well, we talked about the pull cord and everything. Um, yeah, the. Um, uh on the outside of the clear story running there's a handrail which runs along the top and uh i've not seen it i think i've seen it modeled once and somebody in the northeastern railway association did it in four mil and he said it was an absolute pig uh really 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 difficult to do but um in the constructing some of the locos that have been building some of the fine pipe work there um is obviously has like a, a 
a handrail knob, but, but it's a smaller pipe, so it's a smaller handrail, shall we say. And if I was going to be putting a small handrail along that, what I probably would be using is a thin brass uh, rod, 32nd, 64th is the smallest, isn't it? 64th. And get a bit of fuse wire or strip down some copper wire, wrap it around the rod and twist it. So it came out as a, I'm going to draw that. It's really bad drawing. Why are you drawing? Oh. So twist it something like that. So that 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 rounds section there being the where's it gone? Being the rod. Yes. And um, drill into drill into the clear story where it's meant to go, and slot it in when it's when it's finished. Maybe bend the wire down, glue it glue it into place that might do the trick might add that little bit of detail but whilst retaining the strength which i which i spoke speaking about retaining the strength of it short while ago you mentioned translucent paper uh, yes so was asking what translucent paper is it do you mean something like uh, baking paper or something like that it was or tracing paper. It's like tracing paper, but it, again, it's it's another thing using the world of Google and Amazon. It is there is there is a there is a translucent photocopier paper available. Okay, and that's what I was thinking of doing. I was thinking of tr trying to buy some of that. And Christ, you only need one sheet. If you bought one sheet of A4. You probably have enough to do coaches for, <laughs> for the rest of your life, <laughs> but it, but it would I don't know it might be interesting to do. That would probably well, be the now look at me a pack of five hundred. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, that'll probably be the most time-consuming part of, of doing the entire coach. To be honest, um, I think that I think the rest of it, time will tell. But my aim is to have all five of these coaches. Uh, finished by by crimbo by christmas um I some 164 pound a pack say that again i found some translucent paper at 164 pound a pack that sounds a bit steep <laughs> i found some and it was something like 11 pounds for 11 pounds for a pack i think and i and in talking with um uh, Anthony, I said, well, if, if you want to include them in your kit, he says, I'll just print a whole load off for you and <laughs> you, you can have them as well. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so before all of the coach interior is fitted, of course, we, 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 we have to look at painting. Um, and it, the painting of the coaches was, because these are wooden bodied, I wanted to just mention something about this because I don't think anybody else has. Um, if you look at this coach, there's loads and loads of, of well, you can see that you can see the um uh oh, I've forgotten the word. Grain of the wood. The grain, thank you. I've li been living abroad too long. You can see the grain of the wood. And the mistake I made with this coach is that I I was in a hurry, I guess, and I pushed one coat of primer, maybe two coats of primer, and that was that. And what I should have done is to use a bit more primer filler and uh, and, and, and really give the, give the coach a first coat of primer. And what it will do is it'll, it'll lift up the little fibers, wood fibers slightly, brush it down with, and I did this on, on this model, brush it down slightly with a um, fiberglass brush to, to get rid of the, the, the nibs, it's called technical term and nibs, wood fibers, so that it's smooth and then give it another coat of paint. And uh, what I did on this model is I gave it a coat of primer, I gave it a red undercoat and then, uh, and denibbed it, as I said, and then slapped on some, some um, crimson. And I think I should have put more primer on. I should have filled it, filled those, uh, grains a bit more 
And I think it will give a smoother finish to the to the model. I don't know what other people think. Maybe they like it looking all woody, grainy like that, but it was yeah, not, yeah. But um uh yeah, paint painting it painting is always the difficult bit, isn't it? It's the mm -hmm. bit that everybody sees. Yes. And uh and lining. Mm. <laughs> Ha ha ha! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the and these. My things wife's are... calling me. I'll have to leave you, sir. Thank you. Okay. No so my wife's my wife's signaling me. I'll have to go. But thank you very much for your no, advice. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Bye bye. My pleasure. Cheers. Um. Yeah. And and lining it. I think uh, that that's going to be the telling thing. I need to speak to Mr. Taylor about that. Unless anybody else has got any suggestions about how you line out coaches. Definitely you need, to, you need somebody from it as an expert. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Robin would tell you, Nigel. Please do Robin would tell me, yeah. <laughs> I've got a whole it, Robin told me that it's uh, practice. Mm. Mm. Confidence so, and practice. Confidence and practice. Yeah. So um, the difficulty I had with lining out this coach, which, you know, you, you may say, oh, it's all right. Um, I'm not particularly happy with it. But the problem with lining this coach was it, it was the beading was was 0.8 of a mil. And so it was too deep. So you couldn't actually get the the bow pen in where I wanted it quite, quite right. Now, there will be people... Um, who will, you know, the professionals will know how to do that and say, oh, you need a special pen or whatever. But at least the beading on these coaches is a little bit finer. So hopefully it is going to be easier. What type well, of I'm far from, Sorry. I'm far from being a professional, um, but uh, when I want to line a coach, it depends on the surface. It's a... Yeah. It's a at first it's a problem of preparation, as you described with a primer containing filler or something like that. Um, but uh, when I want to do it in a fast way, I use decals. That it's for me um, the best possibility to put to apply lines mm. which are uh, well all the way in the same um, measure. Thickness, when I yeah. do it uh, by painting, it would be a horrible <laughs> uh, result. So, well, it's a cheap, it's a fast method, which I have good experiences. But you have to do some exercises at first. The first time, the result uh, won't, be, um, won't be good. It needs <laughs> a lot of time in practicing, but it works. Uh, there are uh, manufacturers of decals in uh, many measures. I use decals uh, from a company in the Netherlands. I think TL decals. They have an they have a website with a workshop, and uh, oh. they are cheap. Oh, okay, what means cheap? Uh, but it's affordable. Carsten, can you can you paste it onto the um, in the chat? The okay, chat? I I, I check it. One moment, yeah. please. Thank you very much, Carsten, because that will be useful for everybody. And the chat is recorded as well as the video and the and the sound, so that you can go back later and look at it once it's up on the uh, website. Yeah, yeah. You see, Carson, Carson's, uh, Carson's reminded me I have to go to Hamburg at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to photograph a Deltic engine that's there, just so, as an aside. <laughs> um, so decals, it, it was the other thing. Um, Northeastern Railway coaches, um, finding Northeastern decals is, isn't easy. Uh, I learned this week that uh, HMRS have reissued their Northeastern Railway decal sheet. So uh, that was a 
<laughs> a blessing for me. <laughs> um, I, I do have... Did we, buy, did, we buy, did we buy up some sheets before they go out of print again? Well, yeah, they, they tend to sort of sell out quite quickly, don't they? Yes. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be buying a couple of sheets, I think. Thank you very much for that information, Carsten. Much appreciated. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, when you find it, we will see. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Wait a moment, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm supposed to be presenting, so I won't nip to Google and, and look while you're doing. But you said it's called TL. Uh, okay, I I have the link now. Oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> I, I said this is a company from the Netherlands so that's wrong. It's from Germany. Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, we will forgive you. <laughs> it's, uh, I'll, I will say well, something. I can, I can oh. copy it, but Zoom don't Go want to it. Uh, this. Uh, okay, I wait a moment. Um, the site can is um, in German language, but there is a button where you can change it to international versions. Including English. TLmodelbau.de. Is that right? Yes, it's right. There we go. I'm typing it. Oh, I've done it for I'm you. Not so, I'm not so far <laughs> to the typing, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it, um, soon it will appear. Yeah, it it is interesting to see what's available on the continent for for modeling um since i obviously moved out here um is i always sort of relied on on the uk market but there's a, there's an awful lot out there on the continent as well um obviously you're not going to get northeastern railway transfers in uh, in germany <laughs> but um but a lot of interesting modeling parts and things are available there it is quite fascinating what's what is actually available um, the right. problems you have to face when you're constructing or building models, the problems are international. <laughs> it's the same yeah, yeah. if you're building a German rolling stock or something of your favorites. Exactly. Uh, and finding model parts in Slovakia is, is terrible. I found terrible. It really, really, really difficult. So everything is imported in, in from Germany or, or hand carried on the luggage from the UK. Um, right. I think we covered everything there, didn't we? Lining, transfers, white metal castings, glazing, 3D printing. Yeah. Um, OK. So <laughs> I have gone through. Ah, there we go, Carsten. Thank you. So I've gone through sort of what I intend to do for, 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 for building these coaches. Um, <laughs> here's a sort of a uh, can hopefully you, can I ask a question in relation to paints yes putting using some sort of filler primer what yes. sort of paints would you use to paint them would you use acrylics or would you use uh, I, I, don't get on with the, I don't get on with acrylics very well the but the maybe use it for the, the interior seating maybe it's a bit like painting figures it, it it's 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 a decoration. The exterior, then it would be. Uh, I guess I'd use somebody like um, one of the well-known paint manufacturers. <laughs> uh, Precision Paints. That's the word. I think they they do a Northeastern Railway Crimson, which is uh, which is you know, and would probably you, for, for consistency. Would you use a rattle can or an airbrush. I use an airbrush. I don't use a hairbrush. I use <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot cheaper at the hairdressers. It is. Oh, and uh, on the on the decals thing that we were saying, which I would probably would paint the model, and and paint it with a hard gloss uh, varnish, and then apply the the decals, because um, if you put it onto a shall we? I don't know what what. How, how this paint comes out but if it's if it's a slightly matte finish um it it won't be um the decals won't like sticking to it as much as as it they do on a gloss finish 
So I'd probably varnish it in gloss, put the decals on, and then finish it off with a semi mat or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Nigel. There we go. I hope that's been informative for everybody. I, um, it's it's a, a difficult. We're in, the We're in the last couple of minutes. So if anybody's got any questions, please come forward now. Don't be shy. All right. Well, uh, Chris Ward has said acrylic paint is definitely worth investing in. Uh, a Dela Rowney flow enhancer to thin down the paint. I've, I've used flow enhancers on acrylics and they do work very well yeah. because it, it's, it's not like just thinning down the paint. It actually allows it to spread out rather than it just the, the, uh, the suspension in it is still kept. Yeah. But much smoother finish. Much smoother finish. Mm -hmm. Ian McCormack, a uh, six wheel under frame etch. Is, are you talking about the... Um, the etch in this kit in, in this model. Uh, I guess you are. Yeah. Um, it's all right. I can't remember what what is it called the Clemenson system. But um, what I didn't like about the etch in the kit, and this is the etch in the kit, is that it was very flimsy. Uh, and I think, and I think I would probably speak to oh, what do they call him? Nice man, kit build, kit manufacturer, Gladiator and McGowan. I think he, yeah. I think Gladiator and McGowan, and, yeah. and I think they do a a Clemenson system for for coaches. And I think I'd probably use that, and um, it would be a bit stiffer, and it would give a bit more weight at the bottom of the model. Um, yeah. Jim yeah. McGowan is connoisseur. Connoisseur. That's I couldn't remember, but yeah, no, he wouldn't like being thought of as as gladiator, would he? <laughs> no, but I think they do. They do the same. They they do a, a, a an underframe kit as well. Um, maybe my next talk because after I've done these, I'm going to turn my attention to wagons. So maybe the next one we'll do is we'll do something about wagon building, if uh, if people are interested. If you want me back, that is. You might have had enough of Oh, I, I, I think that's almost <laughs> definitely. And I'd just like to say thank you very much for agreeing to take part in these sessions again this year. It's, it's been very good having you on, and uh, I've been educated quite a lot and always tempted to get onto the website and buy one of these coach kits. Well, thank only, you one, <laughs> only one, Tony. Only one. I, what, I'll, what I'll do, I'm doing this because it will be recorded. I promise that I will write an article for the Gazette. Excellent. We'll keep you to that. Thank yeah. you very much then, Nigel. <laughs> thank you. I'll, and thank I'll you for coming to join us today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the session. Uh, and don't yes, forget thank you very me. much indeed. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you very much, Nigel. My pleasure. Excellent. Nice to see everybody. Very good. I don't see many well, modelers from where I am. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. All right. Uh, thanks, Nigel. Cheers. Thank you. I'm Cheers, Richard. Cheers, Tony. All the best, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.